Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. It is that time of year again. It's time for the Sephora VIB sale. The sale starts this Friday, April 1st, and this is a tiered sale. So depending on what tier you're in, based on your membership status, it's going to dictate when you can shop and also the percentage off. The top tier, which is Rouge, shops first, which starts April 1st and up to April 11th. The next tier is the VIB, which starts shopping on April 5th and you receive 15% off. And then the last tier is Beauty Insider, which is free to join. You can start shopping on April 7th and you're going to get 10% off. The code is save spring and you can use this code as many times as you want, both in store and online during the shopping days. A good note, the Sephora collection is 30% off for all tiers. So I wanted to spend today's video talking about my recommendations for the sale. Now, obviously this video is never about you should buy things, but if you're in the market, if you're looking for recommendations, then these are some of the products that are old favorites and also mixed with some new favorites as well. I'm hoping to provide some information on things that I have tested that I think are definitely worthwhile. If that sounds good to you, stick around and let's get started. So I figure I would put this in some sort of order. So I'm gonna break it down into skincare and makeup and hair care. And then at the very end, I'm gonna talk a little bit about perfume because how can I not talk about perfume? <laughs> I love perfume as if you've watched my channel, you'll know. I have a few recommendations in skincare. I want to start with just some simple cleansers on the water-based cleanser side. As you know, I do a double cleanse. I really like gentle water-based cleansers. And this is one of my favorite. Now I thought I had it in my empties because I'm going to be repurchasing it in the sale, but apparently I didn't. So I'm going to put it up on the screen. This is from Milk Makeup. This is their vegan milk cleanser. This is such a beautiful, very gentle cleanser. Now, if you expect this to take all your makeup off, you will be disappointed. This is definitely more of you, you follow after an oil-based cleanser or in the morning in the shower. This is just such a beautiful, gentle, hydrating cleanser. It does not cause redness or irritation, especially if you have sensitive skin, and it definitely does not strip your face and make it tight and dry. If you're in the market for a good cleanser at Sephora, I would definitely try this one. They have this at the normal size, which is $30, and then they also have a mini size as well. Next, moving on to cleansing balms. You know that this is my favorite cleansing balm. This is from Clinique. This is their Take the Day Off Cleansing Balm. The reason I love this cleansing balm above all others are for three reasons. First, it is fragrance-free. Now, I do use cleansing balms that have fragrance in it because I'm washing it off my face, so I don't get too worked up about the fragrance there where I tend to really cut down on fragrance in my skincare in general. But this is fragrance-free, so if you are sensitive to fragrance, this is a great option. The second reason I love it is that it takes your makeup off. You would be amazed how many cleansing balms I have tried that will not break up stubborn makeup, like waterproof mascara, for example. This takes everything off, and that's the whole point <laughs> of using a oil-based cleanser or a cleansing balm. And then finally, the last thing I love about this is that it doesn't leave a film on your face. Again, I have tried many cleansing balms, and some of them leave this film where you keep washing and washing and washing because you think the product is still on your face. I even had one cleansing balm where I was literally taking my nail across my lid because I was obsessed with the idea that there was still product on my face and it just was this film. So if you're in the market for a good cleansing balm, I highly recommend this. I'm filming this video on Monday, March 28th, and this showed up in the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty as a surprise steal for platinum and diamond members. And I picked up two. <laughs> I was really hoping it'd be part of the sale and it was kind of a surprise this morning. If you are a platinum or diamond member at Ulta and you're thinking about this, go get your 50% off. Moving on to exfoliants, I break exfoliants into two categories because of my skincare concerns. The first category is for beta hydroxy acids or BHAs or salicylic acid. BHA is meant to unclog pores. It's meant to get down into that pore, unclog it, kind of increase the health of those pores, diminish the size of them. And if you have acne prone skin, 
or oily skin, especially an oily T-zone, you need a BHA in your life. And there are plenty that I like, but my favorite that I go back to over and over again is the Paula's Choice 2% BHA Exfoliant. This was the first skincare product that I used that besides like a moisturizer that I felt like absolutely transformed my skin and made me believe in skincare. It made me realize that there was something to all this. If you are in the market for a good BHA, look no farther than this one. And then talking about the other big category, which are your alpha hydroxy acids, Alpha hydroxy acids are meant to increase cell turnover. As we age, our skin cell turnover rate slows down, so we need some help lifting those dead skin cells off our face. Chemical exfoliants tend to be more gentle than mechanical ones. I tend to like chemical ones better. There are plenty on the market that are really, really good, but the one that I reach for over and over again is from Pharmacy. It's their Honeymoon Glow. Now this is a blend product, it has glycolic acid, which is the strongest of alpha hydroxy acids. It penetrates the deepest, but it also has lactic acid in here. And then it also has some of the other acids. I think it's tartaric as well, which are the fruit acids. Tartaric acid is sourced from grapes, but malic acid, mandelic acid, these are all good alpha hydroxy acids as well. But if you're in the market for AHA, I highly recommend this one. In regards to moisturizers, if you've been watching my channel, you know I love this product. I hate that I love this product as much as I do because she's a pricey one, but I have yet to find a dupe for her. And that's from Drunk Elephant. This is their Pertini Polypeptide Cream. I love this moisturizer because it's moisturizing, but it's relatively light. And I have combination oily skin. So some of the really, really emollient, thick moisturizer, just too much for me at night. So this is my pick for that. The other reason I like it is this is chock full of good stuffs, chock full of peptides, which are great for anti-aging. And then I also love the fact that it comes in a pump. All the good stuff is in this opaque packaging and it's being protected from light and air exposures. I know even though I'm paying a lot of money for this product, I know it's going to stay good. And then finally, I wanted to talk about a, a few treatments. Now these are relatively new to my collection, but I have fallen in love with them. And the first one is a mask by Pharmacy. This is their 10% niacinamide mask. I have a mini here, but I promise you the full size is already in my cart waiting for the sales to start because I have fallen in love with this mask. I have never seen better results between this and my 2% BHA on my acne prone skin. My pores are tiny. <laughs> I haven't had a lot of congestion. I feel like the two products together have really just revolutionized on my acne prone skin. I love this if you are looking for a mask to help unclog those pores and are looking at something different than maybe a clay mask. This is a great option. It's really hydrating as well. I use this once or twice a week and especially as the summer months come in and we're sweating more and it's hotter outside, I think this is gonna be my new best friend. The other product I wanted to mention is a facial oil. Now you may be saying, hey, it's we're going into spring summer, why are you talking about a facial oil? But my skin has really borne the brunt of the weather changes. I live in the Midwest, you know, it was like 55, 60 degrees last weekend, and then this weekend it was snowing. <laughs> and when that happens, my skin just kinda freaks out a little bit. I get dry patches, it gets dehydrated. I find that a facial oil, even though it's counterintuitive, works wonders. I love rose hip seed oil, The Ordinary has a great one, but Recently, I've been loving this facial oil. And again, I have a mini of it and I have a full size in my cart. This is from Youth to the People. This is their Makai and Asai Prickly Pear Goji Facial Oil. I hope I said that right. This is so hydrating. And I put this on after my moisturizer at night. It just calms everything down. I wake up the next morning and I feel like I can't stop touching my face, which is good and bad, right? But I feel like it just nourishes my skin. It's just a really, really nice hydrating facial oil and it does not break me out. All right, moving on to makeup. Again, we're gonna try to do this in order of application just to kind of make it make sense. But I wanted to start with primer. If you've been watching my channel, you already know what I'm gonna say, but I highly recommend the Hourglass primers. These are pricey, but this is the time, you know, during the VIB sale to pick one of these up. 
I have always loved the Mineral Veil Primer. This has been my holy grail for, gosh, at least two years now. But I've also been loving the new Vanish Primer as well. This one has SPF in it. This one does not. This is more about blurring your pores. But both of them, in, at least in my situation, they provide a beautiful canvas to work from, to apply makeup over. They don't pill, which is great. And they really do help increase the longevity of your makeup, which is what I'm looking for. When it comes to foundations, gosh, there have been so many foundation launches. I really struggled with whether to go to an old favorite or to talk about some of the newer releases that I've fallen in love with. And I decided to talk about the newer releases. My favorite foundation that provides a little bit of glow, not crazy disco ball glow, but a little bit of glow has been this new launch from NARS. This is their light reflecting foundation. This is it's what I expect from NARS, which is the shades are great. It seeps into your skin. It doesn't sit on top of it. And it just provides this beautiful skin-like glow. I just think NARS does foundations best. And this is no exception. Now, if you don't like glowy foundation, you probably won't like this. But at the same time, it's not crazy dewy glowy. It provides this kind of nice, beautiful skin-like glow. And then on the other side of the fence, if you're like, no, I don't want glow, glow bad, <laughs> then I have really been loving this new BBB cream by Patrick Star. This is the one size. And this is the Beauty Blur Balm. This is a cream foundation. This is for the oily girls of the world. This seeps into the skin. It absolutely holds back oil. It lasts forever on my skin. I can wear this all day and not worry about it starting to break up. Now, the only thing I would say about this is the shade range is really wonky. So this is hard to pick a shade online. In fact, I picked a shade online. It was way too dark for me, which was surprising. And then I went and got matched and it actually matched me to a warm skin tone, which I don't have a warm skin tone. <laughs> I have no yellow in my skin whatsoever. In fact, I am neutral, but I even pull a little cool. In A Millionaires, I never would have picked up this shade, but this is the shade that worked for me. So that I would say that's my only downside of this foundation. But if you are oily or combination and you're looking for something that's going to last, especially as we move into the spring and summer, I highly recommend trying this. For concealer, again, I have tried a bunch of new concealers lately and I've been somewhat disappointed. I feel like some of the new launches are just really not meant for mature skin. If you want to hear more details about that, my March favorites and fails is going to be coming up in the next week or so, and I'm going to kind of break this down a little bit more. So I wanted to go back to an old favorite. If you've watched my channel, you know I tried a bunch of different high-end concealers over the last year, and this is the one when I started using these new concealers and found them wanting. This is the one I reached for to remind myself what a good concealer can be. And this is from Laura Mercier. This is her Flawless Fusion Ultra Longwear Concealer. I love this concealer. This is such a beautiful, medium, buildable coverage concealer. It doesn't get crepey. It's not drying under my eyes. Now I do need to set it, but I need to set all concealers. This is just such a great standard. It provides a little bit of brightening, but not crazy. And oh, if you're looking just for a good workhorse concealer, try this one. Moving on to powders, I have two different ones, one for under your eye and one for your face. Now I'm not in any way implying you can't use the powder I'm gonna talk about under your eye, but it, when I get down to it and, and I say, what is my favorite powder? What is my favorite setting powder underneath my eyes? This is the one that always comes up. This is my Pat McGrath Labs Blurring Setting Under Eye Powder. This is it. This is so good. And when I test concealers, I always set with this because this is my standard. This is my gold standard. I want to see how those concealers work with this setting powder. It is so beautiful. I have it in the shade translucent. You can see it's white, <laughs> but it doesn't appear white on the skin. It is a translucent powder. And then this is a setting powder that I can use on under my eyes and on my face, but it is probably my favorite setting powder for my face. This is from Charlotte Tilbury. This is her Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Powder. Now this is a mini version. And I said before that I like buying minis because if I really love the product, then I will buy the full size. Well, when I hit pan on this, I did have, you know, 
a little moment where I cried and then I put the large size in my cart. So it is currently in my cart. This is such a beautiful setting powder. It blurs your makeup. It just provides a beautiful finish and it definitely helps your makeup set. Moving on to cheek products. With spring summer coming, I've been really, really enjoying cream and stick and liquid bronzers. And as much as I can give you a powder bronzer recommendation, I feel like I'm gonna be wearing cream bronzers all summer. <laughs> so I thought I would just give you a few recommendations of those. And I have two here. The first one is from Rare Beauty. This is her Warm Wishes Effortless Bronzer Stick. If you watch my channel, you know that originally I picked up a different shade. It was in the shade Happy Soul. It's supposed to be for cool undertones. And for some reason, it was really warm, like super orange. I went back and picked up Power Boost, which is for a neutral undertone, and it was perfect. This is not too orangey. It blends beautifully, and I highly recommend it if you're just looking for a nice, non-orangey, sun-kissed glow to your face. The other one that I absolutely fell in love with last summer, this is from Makeup by Mario. This is his Soft Sculpt contour stick. I have mine in the shade light. This has so much product. I, I don't get, I'm going to have this forever, I think, but this is also beautiful. It is long lasting. It blends out really, really nicely. Now it does come with the brush on the other end. Some people love this brush. Some people don't like this brush. I actually like this brush, but you can obviously use your own brush or use your fingers or whatever you want to do. Man, does is this a quality product? I'm probably gonna be going back and forth between these two products all summer. For blush, I thought I would give you a powder and a cream option in the powder category. Oh, I have fallen back in love with these Laura Mercier Blush Infusion Powder Blushes. I have it here in the shade Passion Fruit, and I think I have another shade in my cart. I think it's the shade Shy, which is more of a mauve shade. These are beautiful. They go on beautifully, they're not patchy, and they're very long lasting. So I highly recommend these if you're on the market for a powder blush. For a cream blush, I do like the Makeup by Mario cream blush sticks. Those are amazing. But I wanted to give a shout out to the Anastasia Beverly Hills cream blushes that they launched last summer. These are great. I have mine in the shade Latte, which is this beautiful kind of mauve nude. I love this. This blends out beautifully. Again, it's long lasting. It's not patchy. All of the good things. It does have the brush on, on the bottom if you want to use the brush. It is quite stipply. It's quite firm. So you kind of have to like that kind of brush to use it. But it's really, really nice. And then finally for the cheeks, let's talk about highlighter. I really wanted to focus on a highlighter that recently just blew me away. And this is from the brand Say. This is their Glowy Super Gel Lightweight Dewy Highlighter. Now, when you read the description, when you actually read the title of this product, for someone with mature skin, generally you're like, nope, running away. <laughs> just because I find that a lot of really dewy highlights kind of accentuate texture. They're not necessarily so great for mature skin. However, this is different. This gives this almost like glass appearance to your skin. So it's not glittery. It is, it makes your skin look wet, almost like glass. It's a beautiful effect. And I was really surprised by this highlight. If that's not your aesthetic, if you don't like that new kind of wet look, then obviously this may not be for you. But I was so shocked by this. I was so pleasantly shocked by this and I highly, highly recommend it. All right, moving on to eyes. I am gonna put, put a picture on the screen because I realized I didn't grab any of these palettes, but this would be the time to grab a Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette, whether it's one of her midi palettes, which are the middle size, whether you've had your eye on one of the really large palettes. I have had my eye on the Biba palette for, I don't even know, but it's just a little, $129, a little rich for my blood, but I do love the midi size, especially if you can get it during the VIB sale. I love her bronze palette. That's probably my favorite for fall. I just, that is the palette I gravitate towards. I love the glam palette and I love the retro palette as well. The new pastel palette just came out. Now I am not gonna purchase it just because 
a full eyeshadow palette of pastels is just not something that is going to happen with me. If you're into pastels, that would be an idea as well. And then obviously I love the minis. The mini Zendo, the mini Love are some of my absolute favorites. Oh, and the mini Nude, I love that one too. Those are some of my absolute favorites and those are a little bit easier. The price is a little easier to swallow at $25. In regards to mascara, I've been really lucky over the last year. I've tried a bunch of mascaras that I've really, really enjoyed. But the one I wanted to highlight is this one from Rare Beauty. Now I have a mini size. I get a lot of mini mascaras because I go through a lot of mascaras but I have been really pleasantly surprised by this mascara. It's a great everyday mascara. However, it does give some volume. I talk a lot on my channel that I tend to reach for really volumizing mascaras at night and for special occasions. I just, I'm not really big into crazy volume on a day-to-day -day basis, but I am into lengthening and curling mascaras. And this kind of does it all. It does provide a little bit of volume. It does lengthen, it does separate. It does all the things I want it to do without being so crazy voluminous that I feel like I can't wear it to work. <laughs> it is just a really good everyday mascara. So if you have not tried it, this is one of the highlights from the brand that I would definitely recommend. And then finally, I wanted to give a shout out to a lip product that I recently tried that I am absolutely in love with. I now bought two more shades and I'm planning to wear this pretty much all summer long. It's what I have on my lips today. And this is from NARS. This is their Afterglow Lip Shines. This is such a unique formula. It's not really sticky like a gloss. I mean, I love lip glosses that aren't sticky anyway, but this is more of like a shiny, a little bit of shine cream almost. And it provides a lot more pigment than most lip glosses give you. And I have just been absolutely adoring it. I have it in two shades here. I have it in the shade Chelsea Girls, which is what I'm wearing on my lips today. And then I also have it in the shade Unbroken, which has a little shimmer to it. It has a little gold shimmer to it, which is beautiful as well. So if you have not tried this formula from NARS, I highly recommend it. All right, moving on to hair care. I just really wanted to highlight two products that I feel like I almost can't live without at this point. I just love them so much. The first is a dry shampoo. If you've watched my channel, you know that I have fine, very oily hair. It's very hard for me not to wash my hair every day. I have tried in the past a few times to kind of go to that, well, I only wash my hair every other or every third day. And my oily hair was like, yeah, about that. <laughs> and I've tried so many dry shampoos and they all left my scalp super itchy. They all left my hair feeling more oily by the middle of the day than it was in the morning. So I just I had a really, really hard time finding a dry shampoo that works for me until I found this one. And this is from IGK. This is their first class charcoal dry shampoo. Now this has 7% active charcoal powders in it. So this is definitely for oily hair. If you have less oily hair than I do, this may very well be way too much for you. And IGK does have other dry shampoos, which have a lower concentration of charcoal powder, but this is perfect for me. Even I have to be careful somewhat with this, but man, this is the first dry shampoo I've been able to use that allows me to have second day hair that everyone talks about, that I was always like, oh, good for you. You get second day hair, I don't. <laughs> this allows me to have that. The second product I wanted to talk about now, because I've been using dry shampoo, I needed something that was going to get rid of product out of my hair at the end of the week. And this is something I've been trying over the last few months and I've fallen in love with. This is from Way. this is their detox shampoo. This I use once a week and it just kind of clears everything out. It leaves my hair soft and shiny and it has been such a great addition to my hair care game. And then finally, I wanted to touch on perfumes. If you watch my channel, you know I love perfume. And the VIB sale is a really good time if you've been eyeing a perfume to get it at a discount. Now, I realize the two perfumes I'm gonna talk about, I don't have in front of me because this kind of tells you that I have a lot of perfume. <laughs> but I put away my perfume for spring, summer in a dark place because I want it to stay good for as long as possible and you should really store your perfume in a dark 
dry place. So I actually haven't pulled out my spring summer perfumes yet. So they're still in a shoe box in my closet, <laughs> in the back of my closet. But I'll put up pictures on the screen because I was thinking as spring comes, what are some of my favorite perfumes for spring and then and or summer? And the first one I thought of, the one I'm missing right now that I cannot wait to bring out again is from Jo Malone. This is her Nectarine Blossom and Honey. This is a lightly sweet perfume. You get some sweetness from the honey, but then you get a tiny bit of citrus from the Nectarine, but it's a sweet citrus. It's not a really fresh or zesty citrus. Now I love those perfumes too, but for spring, I, I like to look for almost like something that's a little fruitier of a citrus and nectarine just absolutely fits that bill. And this is a perfume I wear to bed. It's not overpowering. It doesn't make people leave the room, you know, that type of thing. I can wear this to work without any problems. And I, like I said, I'll even wear this to bed because I love it so much. The other spring perfume that I wanted to mention is from YSL, this is Mom Paris. This is such a beautiful kind of fruits of the forest type perfume. So if you like strawberry, raspberry, this is gonna be the perfume for you. It is does have a patchouli base, which is very much of perfumes that came out around this time in the middle 2000s. So if you're not crazy about patchouli as a base, you may not like it, but what I love about the patchouli is it really ripens up those berries and it, provides lasting power for the perfume. This is a gorgeous perfume. Now I also love their intense version, which is more of a nighttime. It's more of like a black currant. So it definitely has those deeper full bodied fruits of the forest in it. So the DNA is still there, but it's definitely a sexier, more nighttime perfume. I love that one as well. It comes in that darker bottle. Again, I'll put that up on the screen. But both of them, both the original Mon Prix and the Mon Prix Intense, they're just some of the best performing fruit perfumes on the market. So that's it, guys. I hope this was helpful for you. I wanted to provide some recommendations for the sale. Happy shopping in the sale. I have my cart ready to go. Every once in a while, I look at it and I kind of make a few adjustments. <laughs> so we'll see what I end up with. I will definitely do a haul once I get my packages from Sephora and talk about some of the things that I've picked up. If you're interested in my wish list, I'm gonna be posting that video shortly where I'm gonna be talking about some of the products that I wanna try and some of my repurchases as well. So until then, you guys, like this video, it helps me out. Subscribe to my channel, join our little community here on YouTube. And until my next video, bye you guys.